Cinestill finally responded. They put out like a seven paragraph long statement on their website. That's the only really place I could find it. Um, as of right now when I'm recording this, it is like two days old. It came out on October 18th. Um, but like I said, I didn't see it pretty much anywhere other than just their website, their blogs or pages site. Uh, don't mind all the stuff in the background. I'm currently traveling for work, so the 4Runner is in RV mode. Um, but I wanted to get this up to show you guys what's going on. So let's just read it first, or at least I'm going to paraphrase some of it so you guys get the gist of it because it is really long. So in the first section, they basically address the whole film community uh, that they've been listening, seeing what's been going on, and they want to address the whole Cat Lab stuff first and foremost. As for the meat of it, it says, In the years following the commercial launch of Cinecil's 800T brand, several other businesses around the world were inspired to try to replicate something similar by simply washing off the Remjet layer from existing motion picture film stocks prior to exposure with varying unsuccessful results. Removing the Remjet layer from motion picture film without damaging it is very difficult. We've invested and wasted thousands of feet of test film before we are confident enough in the quality and stability of our film to sell to the public. Unfortunately, similar products released by other companies at that time were substantially inferior in quality to Cinestills and eventually each of these products were discontinued by the companies making them. There was also an unfortunate negative effect on our reputation and the perceived quality of our film based on negative experiences from users and labs with these other films and how they were marketed as similar to Cinestill's films. For a certain amount of time, some photographers and labs thought that all film products made from motion picture film were of poor quality and many labs expressed concern about or downright refused to process any film with motion picture origins, including Cinestill's 800T brand, for fear of damaging their machines or upsetting customers. It goes on to say, it took many years of positive user experience, educating the market, and highly refined quality control practices to overcome negative perceptions and differentiate Cinestill's 800T brand from its early competitors as a high quality, reliable film product. And after at least five years of substantially exclusive and continuous use in the industry, the term, quote, 800T had become uniquely associated with our brand, characteristics, and quality. 800T went beyond just being suggestive and took a legal secondary meaning. If you were to ask someone about 800T film or 800 tungsten film, it was understood that you were talking about Cinestill's film, not any other still film product, and definitely not the much older product for the motion picture industry that had been long discontinued and whose 800T trademark had been abandoned. Our film wasn't even based on the discontinued one. Our concerns were that the usage of 800T to identify other products would lead to confusion for the consumer, which is the basic definition of actionable trademark infringement with dissatisfied consumers, leveraging complaints about 800T and wrongly associate them with Cinestill's 800T film. Similarly, if a lab were to accept a roll of 800T film from another manufacturer who hadn't properly removed the Remjet, processing becomes less accessible to the greater community and damages Cinestill's reputation and business. It was at this point that we began consulting with a trademark lawyer in 2020, and we were advised to register both our company name and the name of our flagship product, both of which had been used to identify our products for the previous seven years. Registering and publishing the word marks Cinestill and 800T was not done to stifle competition, but rather to inform others looking for unique identifiers to avoid interruption in bringing their product to market. This also ensures that the reputation of our brands did not suffer when customers or labs encountered issues with products identified as Cinestill or 800T from sources other than Cinestill. Since 800T and 800 Tungsten specifically had gained a secondary meaning in commerce and were exclusively tied to our brand, we were advised to register both Cinestill and 800T as unique word marks, being years removed from a merely descriptive usage while being wholly exclusive to a singular product. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office registered Cinestill and 800T as trademarks of Cinestill Inc. It continues on, other companies are of course welcome to release products that are 800 ISO and or tungsten balanced and use words such as cinema, tungsten, or 800 as many of the repackaged films out of China have in the past couple of years. Naturally, we are curious of the original source and methods of respooling, but also supportive to see more film available for small businesses and photographers. In many cases, these non-infringing brands have been able to satisfy the needs of film shooters living in regions of the world that have been difficult to reach by other companies, including ours. We are still a small company and getting our film across the world while maintaining supply for the market we currently serve is a difficult thing. Making film more accessible to more people is a good thing for the whole film community, and this has always been a shared goal since joining the industry. 
The release of many of these films also came at a time of significant material price increases in the industry-wide shortages of color negative film, which made them a welcome addition to a time of scarcity. He continues on saying how much they have the film community and our best interests in mind, which I don't necessarily think is the case, to be honest. As stated many times, apparently there were a handful of both photographers and labs, professionals, people who are using this film or films every day, who were confusing some of these films as Cineso films, thus causing problems, which I just don't really believe that that could be the case. I Yes, I do believe that I'm sure there are a handful of more novice film photographers out there who are, you know, getting confused when they're purchasing or sending film in if it's Cinestill or whatever because they don't really know film stocks in general. Otherwise, I think Cinestill is just assuming that all of us as film photographers, as a whole community, are a lot dumber than I think a lot of us are giving credit for, uh, given that we are shooting an analog medium in the current digital age of photography. Also, they mentioned how when you go to search for Cinestill, there were other brands that were popping up causing, again, more confusion which I just think is general basic business SEO practices. Obviously these businesses are trying to capitalize off of selling the same film as you at a lower price. Thus, they're gonna try to get into the search engine when people are searching for Cinestill, thus their products pop up. I think that's just normal practice when it comes to online e-commerce and that's something that they just have to get used to, I guess, I don't know. Additionally, I'm not sure if this would hold up in court if it really uh, did come down to that as for at least from my understanding which definitely not a lawyer so obviously I don't know everything to the ins and outs but from my understanding in order to have a trademark that is a general term descriptive term be trademarkable it has to have secondary meaning uh, and someone on reddit I think did a good job of explaining what that would mean uh, in an example so coca-cola uh, has secondary meaning because when you say coca-cola you're thinking of the actual cola that comes in the red can of the brand that they've made for the last hundred of years. You're not thinking of any generic cola brand. So if we use that same logic uh, and think about Cinestill 800T, how are people confusing it with any other brand on the market if it has this secondary meaning? Just something to think about. Otherwise, I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. I'll stay on the loop with all this Cinestill news um, as we hear more from them or from Cat Labs or whoever in the future. Um, otherwise, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I uh, got some more videos from my trip from Utah and Colorado coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Peace out and see you soon.